Stitch your love into these Stadium Stripes Knit Hat made on one loom, two different sizes, today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses for another weekly tutorial on knitting. Be sure to subscribe to get your weekly video. Today we're going to make the Stadium Stripes hat and you can cheer on your favorite team by stitching your love into one of these. The cool part is, is we're working with one loom to make two different sizes. This is a women's size and this is a men's size hat. The only difference is I've changed it the type of knit stitch to make it a little stretchier for the man um, and a little firmer for the women. So we want to work with two different contrasting colors. I've chosen a green and a white to look like the football field or a soccer field, just kind of fun, or you can use your favorite team colors. We're working with a round loom. This is the adult hat loom from Cindy Wood Looms. Also the Nifty Knitter adult hat loom that's discontinued as purple is the same thing. This is 48 peg, 5 8 spacing between the, um, the pegs here. So that's all you're going to need. You're going to need one ball of each color. Now you're going to need a bulky number five weight or a six weight. In this case, the two colors I wanted, actually this one is a five and this one is a six. They're both soft, softy chunky. The baby one happens to be a five. So click on the link in the description below to get the full details on the pattern and have it next to you so we can work together. We'll work on this from beginning to end. Let's begin. All right, so when you get your pattern, you're going to see the Stadium Stripes Knit Hat and some more information on here. And go down, we've got our yarn, which I just talked about. We're going to do contrast A is in emerald. That's the green color. And contrast B is the white. And um, they are two different weights. The emerald on mine is a six and the white is a five. And then, of course, your loom and um, materials. I've got stitch marker listed on here. And on my particular loom, I see the starting peg. But if you get confused which one, you could put a stitch marker on peg number one. You're also going to need a measuring tape and your loom tool. And we're going to go down to the instructions. And this is where we talk about the cast on. And then we're going to work on the brim or the ribbing section. And then we will work the main slip stitch tweed pattern. And this is the part that is the main pattern of the hat. And then down down below is the shaping of the crown. So we will go through all of that uh, in this entire tutorial. So we're going to start here at the long tail cast on. For the long tail cast on, you're going to want to wrap your loom around three times. So this is the distance around your project. It's three times and make a slip knot at that point. So we're just going to make a slip knot and then take this extra yarn off of the loom. Now the tail is the part that's extra and that's going to be towards you and the ball part is towards the back or the inside of the loom. We're going to um, work in one direction. You can work in either direction and we'll have a separate video showing both directions for you for this particular tutorial. So you're going to place it on peg one and with the first one I'm going to go ahead and do a unit wrap around that first stitch and lift up and over to secure that. And then now with the tail, I'm going to e-wrap. So we will e-wrap each stitch first, and then we will u-wrap with the ball that's in the back. Okay, just like that. So now you can, because we're e-wrapping, you can go ahead and e-wrap a few ahead. So one, two, three, but don't e-wrap all of them or you're not going to have a very consistent uh, look to it. So then we're just going to u-wrap and go all the way around in the shape of a u and then knit that off. Okay. And see how it can pull here. We don't want to have too much slack in it. So it's easier or better to go ahead and just e-wrap once and then make our u-wrap, e-wrap once and make our u-wrap and go all the way around the loom. And once you've gone all the way around, I'm gonna show you the trick to um, make this to where it, you don't have that uh, seam, that hard seam there. So we're gonna connect these in the round and begin the main stitch pattern. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. All right, so we've come to the end of our cast on. I want to pick up the first stitch and hold that up. And this is where I can go ahead and slip on my stitch marker to show the first stitch. Pick up the last stitch and put it on the first stitch and then tighten that up 
And now we're going to move what was the first stitch onto the last stitch. And just switching those, just like this, uh, and, and keeping this first stitch as the first, you're just, you're gonna knit away on it, even though it's right above where that was. Just switching those like that will actually help um, line up your hat correctly. In the hats that I do, you won't, you won't be able to tell where one round ended and one round began. So you're gonna begin uh, your first stitch pattern right at this spot. The first stitch pattern we're working on, of course, is the ribbing, so we're going to work with a uh, knit and a purl. In this case, we're going to make a U-wrap knit stitch. So the U-knit stitch is just simply going around the back side and lifting up and over. The purl is going down below and then lifting it up and making a new loop, pulling off the old and putting on the new. So we'll do that one more time. We're gonna wrap around in a U form like this. Make sure that it's not uh, too loose. Okay, and then come to the front. Don't pull on it come to the front and make that purl stitch. So you're gonna continue this all the way around uh, until you have two inches of the ribbing. All right, pause your video, meet me back up when you have two inches knit. See you soon. We are ready for our slip stitch tweed pattern and we are gonna be working four rounds and the first two rounds we'll use this contrast A. So our main color is gonna be worked for two rounds in a row. The first round we're going to be knitting and the next round we'll be purling. But on both rounds we're going to be skipping or slipping the same stitches. So you're going to knit one, two, three stitches and then skip one. And that is it for round one. Then the next round you're actually going to go and purl one, two, three stitches and then slip one. So the last stitch of each round is going to be not worked. So you'll just be slipping or skipping in the back and where you hold the yarn in the back. So let's go over the stitches that you need for their two sizes. So if you want the stretchier stitch, you're going to be e-wrapping these stitches. You just do one, two, three, and skip one in the back and then keep going. So this would be an e-wrap stitch. If you want the smaller size, uh, the women's size, you're going to be uh, doing a traditional knit uh, or reverse purl as some call it. So we're going to um, put our loom hook underneath this loop here and pull down with this yarn on top, the working strand on top of that loop, pull down and make a new loop. And then we lift it off and then put the new one on. And that is a true knit stitch or traditional knit stitch. Same thing here, make sure the working strand is on top and then you're gonna just pull that on through downward lift it off and put it on same thing for here so and then when we get to the next one you are just simply going behind that peg here and just holding it so we're just slipping the stitch and then moving on to the next if you are e-wrapping um, you're going to be doing the same thing except you get to load it all the way around the loom and I'm going to show you how to a quick way to do that so you will, I'm gonna undo these stitches here. And what you do is you've got a quick way to do it where you can do two at the same time. Basically, it's a um, almost like when we do a quick garter, we're just going to be e-wrapping one, two, three, skip one, one, two, three, skip one, one, two, three, skip one and I would encourage you not to pull these too tight especially if you're trying to make sure it's nice and stretchy for a larger hat so don't uh, tug on this and get a really tight tension just nice and loose wrapping three and skipping one wrapping three and skipping one and continue all the way around and pause your video and I'll meet back up I'll show you how to do the round two um, with the purl stitch see you soon two Three, we're coming to the end of round one. We skip this uh, peg here or slip it, and we want to purl this first stitch. So if we've e-wrapped, we just simply lift up and over. I'm gonna go ahead and knit off one, two, three, and now I'm going to purl one, two, three. So it's just the opposite of the true knit stitch. We scoop up from the bottom, lift the old one off, and put the new one on, and then come to the front of the next one, Make sure that working strand's underneath. Lift up, 
pull off the old, put on the new, and then the next round, here we go. So we've done three, and then we're skipping or slipping back behind this one again, and we're continuing on. So I uh, finished your round two, and if you are working uh, with the true knit stitch, uh, you've already performed all these, so now you just need to do the same purl, uh, purl three, skip one, purl three, skip one. So it's the same on both sizes um, for that. All right, pause your video, meet you back up, and we will begin round three, adding in the new color. See you soon. Okay, so this is round three, and I get excited when I'm thinking about this round because up until now, you can't see the pattern emerge. So once we put this uh, contrast B on here, you'll start to see every fourth stitch is going to change colors and it will shift every other row. So uh, what we're gonna do is go and add this first stitch in here. You can just knit it, um, just knit up and over that, that way when you add the first color in and then this tail will get woven in later on. So for the um, for the third round, we're going to knit the first stitch and then we're gonna skip the second stitch and then we're going to knit the next three stitches. So of course, this would be traditional knit if you want the smaller one um, or E-wrap for the larger. So you can see here where I've got a skipped stitch and this is green. So where I've got these little green markers, you're gonna see these are, these are gonna end up being columns that are always going to be this contrast A or green. It's gonna develop this long column of color. Everywhere, uh, every other stitch in between there is going to remain in your color B or uh, it's going to be white after, after this row. This is actually the one that has been skipped the last two times uh, on the last two rows. So you're gonna continue working around here and I'll meet you back for round four to show you. It, it'll still be the same as we did before. We'll be purling and we'll do what we did as where we're going to purl one, skip one, purl three. Um, but I want you to see all of these um, ready and knit over. All right, go ahead and uh, do the first stitch, skip one, knit three, skip one, knit three, and keep working. Pause your video and I will see you soon. Okay, we've got round three all wrapped and um, you could have finished that, of course, with the traditional knit. I'm gonna start purling, so we're just gonna purl one. That first one, you may have to kind of pull on that working tail just to get it snugged up because that's where we started uh, with the new color and you won't be cutting any color from here on out. So we've got a purl one, we're gonna skip or slip in the back and again, this green is gonna stay showing through. Then you're going to make sure to purl these next three stitches. Okay, so once those uh, those greens are lifted up and over, and that last one, this middle column of this set of three of white is going to stay always white for this pattern. And that's important to know. So when you start seeing the pattern develop, if you start seeing green in this column, then you've um, you've made some adjustment somewhere. Um, you don't want to have any green uh, or any of that uh, color A in that column. So we get to here and you're going to slip and then we're going to work these stitches and uh, then purl three. So you can see the uh, pattern is starting to emerge right here. So you see one, two, three, color, one, two, three, color. So you're gonna continue all the way around and pause your video, maybe back up for the beginning of the next round. I wanna show you a little bit how to keep your place. See you soon. All right, so these four rounds that we just did form the slip stitch tweed pattern and you're gonna continue in your work until from the brim up till you stop is eight inches for the women's or eight and a half to nine inches for the men's. Uh, real quickly before you move on, um, in a second I will show you what the pattern looks like as it emerges, but I want you to see these floats in the back and to tell which round you're on. So if you see two strands held in the back here, with um, one color, then you need to move on to the next color at the beginning of your round. So this uh, this one, you can see that I've clearly got two, uh, two strands here held in the back of the white. And so my next one, I'm just gonna pick up the green and then make sure that my ball is behind it back here or else it's gonna start getting twisted everywhere. So you, you would move your ball to the back and then continue um, working. It's always a knit row first, skipping the special, uh, the, the certain ones every fourth one. Uh, and then when you start the 
um, white, you're just going to pick up and only knit one and then skip and move on. And of course, every other row is going to be purl. Okay, so continue knitting along. I'll meet you back up and show you what this looks like as it's gotten longer and show you those um, all white and all green columns as they go. All right, see you soon. All right, so now that we've got uh, several inches of this worked up, I'm, I'm towards the end near where the crown or the top is going to be. And you can see uh, that there's very definite columns of where this white yarn is and where this green yarn is. And so we've got a column that is always going to stay the same here, but there's also this column in between and every two rounds, it changes color. Okay, so you see it alternates color here. So this this column is always going to be white, and this is always going to be green, or whatever your color A and B are. And you can see that this one, um, you can see the stretch in this one. This is the E wrap, and it looks exactly the same when you use the true knit stitch. The only difference is this one is going to be more compact, elongated wise, and then it won't have as much stretch, uh, stretch width wise or around. And then this one is going to have a little bit more stretch here than this one does. And then of course this one's a little more compact. That that E wrap stitch makes it an elongated round or row. So that's the difference between those two. All right, let's move on to shaping the crown or the top. All right, so I've worked my hat to the length that I want. For the women's, you wanna stop it where it's about at eight inches, and for the men's, about eight and a half or nine inches, or measure it to um, the person that you want and uh, make sure and leave a bit of room for the crown. And so once we know we have that, then we will move on. If you need to work on one more um, set of uh, rounds one through two and then stop or um, go all the way to the end of round four and you will then break your yarn. So we're gonna break B. And then we will begin working just with A. You can leave this tail in and weave it in later. So we're going to begin shaping the top or the crown. In this method of shaping the top of the crown for a 48 peg loom, it's going to look similar to this one. Now this one is about two inches from this part here to where the end of my pattern stopped. This is using the true knit stitch and we will use the e-wrap stitch on this example. So use the one that you desire so it will be a little bit longer in the e-wrap stitch. So this is how nice and tight you can see it and you, were, you will be left with 24 stitches at the end of this. You could also pick up all the stitches and move them down to a 24 peg loom and do an even bigger a decrease, um, but for these purposes, I like how this hat is, and we're gonna continue on in this method. For this pattern, I am using the uh, shape top or crown listed here, and that's of course in the description link down below. We're gonna work the first round, knitting four and then knitting two together, and we'll repeat all the way around and we'll take out eight stitches and go down to 40. And then we will knit the alternate rounds, basically skipping what we didn't work uh, the round before and then when we we will continue decreasing it now when we get to uh, round three and also round five we're going to be moving some stitches around so they're not listed in here this is just the basic like boil down essential what we're doing but I'm going to show you kind of moving them around to make it evenly spaced on your loom so that you get an even amount of yarn uh, stretching around it all right let's do that now okay you're going to knit four stitches and in this case, I am using E-Wrap because main, my main hat was E-Wrap, but if you're working on the hat that has, or a hat that has a, um, a unit stitch or a true knit stitch, then you're gonna wanna do that. So I've got knit four, and then uh, you can go ahead and knit these off. That way you can keep track. And we're not gonna be doing any more pearls, or any pearls on this method. And then we're going to take five and put it on top of six. So I've knit one, two, three, four, skip five, move it over to six, and then we're going to knit these two together in whatever stitch that you've been doing in your main hat. All right, and then you just simply repeat that. So we're gonna knit one, two, three, four, and then we're gonna move these over. So going ahead and knitting these off is going to be easier to do that. 
So knit four, knit two together for round one. Repeat this around and then work one more round uh, knitting all stitches except for the skipped ones. Meet me back for the third round. See you soon. Okay, we're on round three. Again, round two, we were just uh, skipping all of these pegs and slipping that yarn in the back. And you're going to work your knit stitch of choice here. Work one, two, three. So knit one, two, and three and then we're going to move stitches over again so we're just going to do something a little bit different this time I want to work everything to this peg that uh, is empty and uh, I'm what I'm doing is I'm, I'm evening these stitches out so I'm going to pick this peg up that was the sixth peg and moving it over to this empty peg which was the fifth Oops, I got a little tight there and then we're going to move this peg here the next one and move it on top and you can um, go ahead and move it on top or you can put it, you can leave it where it is and knit it in place and then move it. So now I'm going to knit these together. Okay, and so now you can see I have an empty peg on either side of it. And then these will get addressed uh, the next time we come to another decrease row. So now you're just gonna move on and make your knit three stitches together. Uh, I'm sorry, knit three stitches and then you'll work these two stitches uh, together. So just simply repeating that, and then you're gonna work one more round knitting the stitches after this. So let's show you this. So we can do this, knit this stitch and move it over. This is how you would do what I was describing before. You could even move it over here and go ahead and knit this stitch so you're not moving a bunch of them, and then just place it on this empty peg in between. But then you wanna make sure and snug up that stitch so that it's consistent. You see that? All right, so you're gonna knit three and then knit two together. Knit three, knit two together all the way around and then do one round where you're skipping the um, skipped stitches. You're slipping behind here. All right, pause your video and I'll see you soon. All right, so I've done the fourth round, skipping all of those pegs in the back, and now we're ready to do the last decrease round. We're going to knit two stitches, and then we're going to walk some stitches around to knit two together. And again, this is just to get that spacing again. So knit two, and then we're gonna move this stitch here, the third one, moving it over one here. And then we're gonna move this two over to the three. And it's already been worked, but I'm just getting this spacing here. And then now we're gonna move this one here over, all the way over here. So this is technically like the fifth peg in, and then these will get knit together. So it's knit two, knit two together. And you see how that's now spaced out, and so we're going to knit two here and then move these around so this one moves over here. So we'll space it out. So you can also space it uh, like this. You can knit one and then start moving these. See, there's that knit two, and then um, move these together. And again, as I've done on over the row, I can work that first stitch and then move it on top of the one that's supposed to be worked with it, and then knit that stitch. Okay, and then see now they're all spaced out. You're going to continue make knitting two and then knitting two together all the way around, and then work one more round knit where you're skipping behind the pegs, and we'll meet back up to secure this end. Pause your video, and I'll see you soon. After you've made your sixth round of knit and secured that, go ahead and break your yarn and thread in a um, tapestry needle, and you're going to thread through the remaining stitches and then pull it off of your loom. So you're just gonna go up through that stitch and then pull it off, and then continue going all the way around the loom through all the stitches and pull through this last stitch in the end and cinch it up and we'll sew it in together. See you soon. All right, so I pulled it off and I'm just going to cinch in and pull in this. 
and you can see the hat crown shaped here. It's about a half an inch um, longer from uh, from the center point down than the um, other hat. Uh, this one is using a true knit stitch and this is using an e-wrap so they're just slightly different so depending upon the knit stitch you use it will make this different. of course the e-wrap is a little stretchier stitch so if you're going for a bigger hat go for that so i'm just going to go into uh the last stitch before uh or a couple and then i'm going to pull through to the other side and get this nice and uh, secure. So I'm just gonna go right through the middle of that hat, turn it inside out. Okay. And then we're just gonna go through a few of these loops to secure it. I leave a loop and go back through. And then we'll do another one. Pick up a couple loops leave a loop and go through and then we'll do one more just for good measure back in that same loop one last loop and for um, tying this in we'll just to put that final knot Go ahead and cut it off and turn it inside out. And you're gonna weave in your tails. I have this last tail here that I wanna weave in. Okay, so we're gonna weave in our tails and go on the inside of the hat here. And if you have a knit column, you can see the back of it. And I'm just gonna bring this on up through my cast on and go around these side of these stitches where it has the V. So if you just whip your stitch your needle through there and kind of whip around you'll see how uh, your yarn will travel right up that knit column so just work our way up this column here and get it all the way up to the top and then you can clip it and then it will retain how stretchy it is I'm just gonna go ahead and clip this one here and then uh, you've got any other straggler yarns here where we had we had our white, and you'll want to go ahead and weave that stitch in as well. And you've got your final hat. So there you go. Now I've made two hats. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed stitching your love into these Stadium Stripes knit hats. And I would love to see what colors that you made for your winning team. Be sure and tag me at Good Knit Kisses on social media, Instagram, and Facebook. Paste it on my page, whatever you'd like to do. And uh, be sure to let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed seeing this and what you'd like to see next. On behalf of Good Knit Kisses and me, I'm Kristen, wishing you happy knitting. Bye-bye.